everybody, I'm Josh, uh, we have Pete here and we are here to go through the exciting brand new Chapter 1 2023 die collection. Um, We've got some dies by some fantastic designers, uh, Lisa Jones, Jen Ogborn, Olivia Rose. We have some by Pete. We we also have some by uh, our very own Jess, which is really excited. And uh, I think we've got a special mention as well, haven't we? We are going to do a sneak peek. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, at the end of our presentation today, we're going to look at what Mr. Holtz, Mr. Tim Holtz, has got coming out for the first part of 2023. So stick around for that. Yeah. So we have some embossing folders, we have some big styles, we've got some stamp sets, we've got some stamp and die sets. Um, so a few different categories, but let's just kick off with some stunning thin lit dies from our design team here. So to kick us off, this is the first one. This is Boho Bouquet by uh, the very talented Lisa Jones. And I absolutely love this set. The thing I like about this is that you have a massive variety of different sizes of florals. It's stylized, it's, it's very sort of contemporary, it's simple and it, it's really impactful. Um, we do have an embellished image for this at the side uh, here. So you can see the size of them as well is perfect. They take up that perfect amount of space on a card. Whether you are kind of maybe sectioning it off, hanging it over the edge and just showing a partial part of the flower or if you're creating your own, uh, as the name sort of suggests, a whole bouquet of flowers. This one is really cool. And that one is just to get us started. So let's have a look at the next on our list. I'll make a done pile over there. Now we have, uh, so this is the, so the only big die in the collection here. This one also by Lisa Jones. Now, incidentally, this one works with that previous die set and indeed any kind of floral die set that you can create a bouquet with. Bouquet or bouquet? Bouquet. Bouquet. <laughs> bouquet. <laughs> bouquet. <laughs> Any that you can create uh, a bouquet with. We've got um, these fantastic vases here. With this being a Biggs die, we uh, obviously have that capability. If I just show you this embellished image here of cutting from some thicker mediums here. So uh, with a Biggs die, you've got felt, you can cut fabric, you can cut thin plastic, leather, uh, anything that a good pair of scissors can cut. And that just gives you the opportunity to create some dimension in here. So here are the vases on their own, which are absolutely stunning. We've used just some of those floral elements to decorate them. And then here we have these same vases. These are just cut from cardstock because, of course, that's a capability anyway of the big styles with these lovely floral bouquets in there. So there we are. This one is called... Crockery by Lisa Jones. Absolutely fantastic. And next up, we've got one from the wonderful Jen Ogborn, and this is Botanical Card Front. I love card fronts. Now you might look at this, this is two dies. There's an outer die and there's an inner die with all the detail. And you might look at this and say, mm, you know what, there's not much you can do with it. There is so much that you can do with a die set like this. There really is, I mean, paper piecing, the colors that you can use in between, you can you, you can do like a faux emboss with yeah. it. And here it is. Here it is in all its glory. This is actual size. I'm excited to get going with this one. Be... Yeah, you mentioned the faux emboss there. I can think of so many different mixed media techniques I could do with this. Once we had that as kind of a tone on tone piece with just those, those bits that are, are sticking out so they take on that mixed media uh, medium. Very much so, but if you if you cut a third colour as well and pop those little what ah, I didn't think of that. the offcuts, you can pop them in between. You know, it'd be lovely to have a sunset, yeah. maybe a paper piece in. That's cool, isn't it? Paper piece in. I right. learned that one on TV. There you go. <laughs> All right, what's next? Brilliant. So next we have. Um, so we're going to go through just these two letter dies here. These two thin lit letter dies. This one here is absolutely fantastic. This is scripted alphabet uh, by. Jen Ogborn, the incredibly talented Jen 
Ogborn. Um, she always gets it right, Jen. Uh, and have a look at this one here. So we've got these lovely big ornate letters there, but then I love the way that you can piece them together with these much smaller uh, calligraphic style kind of handwritten letters here. And there's something very vintage about this. I feel like you, you know, you could create something that almost looks like a signature with it. I just think it's a really great and, and, and a perfectly sized set here. So this one here is scripted alphabet. Uh, and then we've got another one, haven't we? But do you know what I like about this? Just before we, uh, I like the fact that they're all on one piece of steel. Oh yeah. Because when you get a bag full of letters, you're going to lose them. Especially yours. Yeah. Oh, especially yeah. Yours. yeah. <laughs> Can I order another set of these? Yeah. <laughs> because we'll always lose an important letter. Never the Z, it's always the E or the yeah. A or something like that. <laughs> so, yeah, that is a really, really classy alphabet. Well yeah. done, Jeff. Brilliant. Uh, next up, I've got one by the equally wonderful. They're, they're all wonderful. We don't have any favourites. We don't. <laughs> this is by Lisa Jones and it's called Variety Sentiments. And it is exactly as the name suggests. So we've got new home, new baby, thank you, love you, thanks. Happy Mother's Day, happy Father's Day. So you can, we've got happy birthday, of course. Mm -hmm. So this, this is for all year round. And again, it's a handwritten, it's not calligraphic uh, as the other one is, but this is, looks like something, you know, that modern handwritten stuff. I know you love this style, Joe. Oh, I love it. The reason being is because it's much harder than you think to imitate very nice handwriting, isn't it? Do you oh, know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. It, it, you could handwrite it and think it's going to turn out uh, looking nice enough to put on a card front, but it's very difficult to get that space in. Uh, you know, this is just a really stylized piece. I love it. Well, I appreciate this because my handwriting is so bad, I should have been a GP. <laughs> I really should have. It really is that bad. Yeah. So, wow. Thank you, Lisa. <laughs> Okay, next on the list. So this is Geo Frames and Borders here. Now this one, I feel kind of in its simplicity, it's absolutely brilliant. We've got these two big, uh, well, I say two big here. We've got uh, one big and one smaller, these kind of sun pieces. And then these lovely kind of pattern repeat, uh, almost like geometric, well, a sort of, uh, as the name states, these geo frames. It's that lovely kind of symmetrical pattern on there that you can choose to use. Uh, as I say, you know, I love to layer these up, uh, have them hanging off the side of a car, I'll trim that card and then have partial bits of this showing. I was just going to say that. I love that. I, I love using them in the center of a card, but just getting them off the edge. Wow. And just look at the size of them as well. This is a massive, bold piece that's almost, you know, if you put this down on a card straight away, you've got a lovely kind of canvas there to work on and add a sentiment to the middle, uh, you know, decorate it with all these lovely decorative pieces here and the colors that you can choose and pair together, uh, the possibilities are endless. So this one here, is Geo Frames and Borders by Lisa Jones. I'm going to come in with another one by Lisa Jones. Now, you might think that this has nothing to do with the last one, but I've got a couple of samples which will prove you otherwise. <laughs> this is Nature Friends. Uh, just as the name suggests, we've got some gorgeous bears. There's a, oh, badger. I couldn't think of the name. It's a badger. <laughs> it's a badger. badger. There's a bunny rabbit. There's a hedgehog. And there's a wee little birdie. And of course, as with, as with Lisa always does, she adds a little bit of foliage, which... I, you know, I like the foliage by itself, but yeah. it's got everything going on. There's a little butterfly which can alight on the rabbit. Oh, the butterflies make it on here because they're they all do. kind of looking up there. No one gets a, sort of the character dies just like Lisa gets them, I find. You know, these lovely cute animal character dies. There's something about Lisa's style that is so appealing and she's got it perfect here. But with nature, I, I love the thought of a love affair between a badger and a butterfly or a bear and a butterfly. It's like a storybook, isn't it? It's like a children's well, storybook in itself. Folks at home, they can write their own stories. So <laughs> there are 11 times in that set. Now, remember our last one? There we are. Oh, wow. Lisa has combined the two here. Are these, are these gifts? Are they from another chapter? Chapter? We're going to have to find out. Yeah, we'll, we'll find, find out. out. I'm not sure <laughs> at all. But you can see we've got, we've got some lovely numbers going on in there. We've got these lovely... You know, it's... And this is the thing about dives like this. They can be whatever you want them to be. There's no hard and fast rules. You want to make it a birthday, fine. You want a natural background, fine. You want to do these in really classy, almost like um, Art Deco colors, 
You'd be my guest, but hey, the gift that keeps on giving. Oh, that's a fantastic, I love this one. I really love this set, especially the way she used it with uh, those geo borders because it's the, it's the same simple style where she's got those little, the bits that cut in to add the detail. Oh, yeah. it's just perfect. Knows what she's doing, that one. Do you want to take this one? <laughs> I do, thank you very much, especially because this is my make. I'm very proud of this oh, make. Oh, there you go. Um, so this is ornate frame here. Now, this is very, very clever because we've got uh, a 2D embossing folder and I can't say enough about 2D embossing folders. I, I, I love 2D embossing folders because there's so much that you can do. I think people think because we've got all these fantastic, you know, 3D embossing mm. folders, multi-layer embossing folders, that, that 2D is a bit behind the times, but it really isn't. You know, they're just completely different products in themselves. Yeah. I really like this, especially this one here yeah. because you've got the die cut pieces as well that are going to fit into these so you can change the color on there and, and i've got an example here in the in the embellished image there where we've done that lovely tone on tone but you could choose contrasting tones as well uh where you know you can mix and match you can kind of make it you could have metallic um ornate kind of bits in there it's, it's a really lovely one but have a look at how i used it here uh, and and just subtly i just chose a few of these to add you know uh, a little bit of uh, a different tone to this pink here. And it's just turned out really elegant there. And then, um, of course, we've used these. Are oh, are these some of the foliage bits Those from are the that set? The, yeah. From the first set we looked at. Yeah, so we can see already how we're using these together. Um, and the reason I chose the name Bethan was simply... <laughs> okay. Uh, simply, I feel, I feel like I'm digging a hole for myself here, was simply because it's an aesthetically pleasing name. Um, and that's it. It's really lovely. I'm sure Susie, your partner, <laughs> Be I wasn't going to mention that. It's not aesthetically <laughs> Lovely. It doesn't look right. So that one there is Ornate Frame, uh, and that is by Lisa Jones. Uh, there we are. So. Now, next up. Oh, I'm going to show you this one. This is a Jen Ogborn uh, production. It's Fanciful Corners. It's one of those magic bullet dies I like to call them because you put one of these in and it completes the make. So you can add die cuts over the top of this. Imagine if you had a journal, you could pop these in the corner. Um, as you can see, there are four distinctly different ones, kind of stylistically different. Some of them are very, very flourishy, almost Art Nouveau. Some of them are very Art Deco with, with sharp edges as well. But when we see them together, and you know what? You can layer these one over the other. We've got a lovely make um, on, uh, I think it's Eileen Hull's journal, yeah. where some of these will be coming in later. But imagine taking this one and doing it in reverse so you can have these back to back. This makes a central focal point. Uh, you could have it almost like a book plate, maybe maybe put a strip across there and use oh, the alphabet. Yeah. Isn't that lovely? I'm desperate to use this uh, black on black with some luster wax to create a really kind of, uh, maybe like Art Deco, is that the style? Art yeah, Deco kind it, of yeah. corner piece. But remember when you were talking about the paper piece in earlier, yeah. I feel like we could still do that with this. And also oh, yeah. you get little hearts in there as well, you which do, is like, this, it, people would wouldn't actually think about that with this set, but it comes with two little heart pieces. Yeah, lovely flourishes. So if we talk about the negative space there mm -hmm. and the negative space there, those two flourishes together, you, yeah. you can use them together with that. You can take them out. You, you can get your paper sculpting kit. You can get some dimension. Really, really nice set. Thank you, Jeff. Love that set. Uh, now, I wanted to show this one here because this is one of our more, uh, should I say, child-friendly dies. That doesn't mean that it's for children. It means that it's more child-friendly. This is a, like a creative play sort of die set, yeah. isn't it? Um, and it, it, it's called a Basic Easter Shapes, and it's by Olivia Rose. But it, it is what it says, it's those basic shapes, it's those kind of staples you need around Easter time. That lovely chick there. They are, and this, this lovely bunny here, we've got the cracked egg. Uh, these two pieces fit over this egg element there. Um, I've actually got a hat somewhere. Maybe James could run it. I think it's out there. There's a green hat that I made with this set over here. I don't know why it's not here. I don't know why it's not on my head right now. Uh, I think the hat that I ordered to make it was well, it, it is a bit too small, uh, if I'm honest, to put on my head. But just have a look at that. Just a nice kind of creative place. And you can imagine creating something like this with your Easter children bonnet. at home. Exactly, an Easter bonnet, and yeah. 
it just about well it doesn't fit on my head and that that's saying something because my it head is tiny great yeah I was say, mate, you rocked it you yeah, I yeah. <laughs> yeah i wasn't gonna say I but take it. Yeah. <laughs> so this one here is basic easter shapes and that's by olivia can, rose can i just say i love yeah. i love these basic shapes because it's like a clean palette so you you can do some paper tearing you can emboss these shapes they've got that boldness the, uh, so embossing doesn't interrupt the flow of yes the shapes. they're just basic pure beautiful beautiful shapes it's sort of going back to basics the way that we used to do die sets at Sizzix, and you know what it gives you so much creative um mileage so many possibilities it's a lovely lovely scent Thank yeah you, Olivia Rose. funny you say that because I can, I can i know exactly what you mean by that those kind of sort of i, I don't want to say old school but those die hard Sizzix fans who've been with us since you know we started making those die cut machines they will recognize this style oh, yeah. uh, and, he, and you know i haven't been at the company that long but i can recognize that style from looking at the past dies. a lot of people miss those more basic exactly we, with the, the industry we've gone for really flowery fanciful lots of detail sometimes it's just nice to rein it back in you know it really is yeah now next the lovely Jen Long, one of our colleagues in California. She makes these wonderful, wonderful die sets. It is a thin lit die set, and it's called Card Cafe. Now, you're probably thinking that the illustration on the front doesn't match up to what we see there. But if we take a look, if we take a look at how that comes out, but it's so cleverly designed. So you can have something on the front like that, and you can have your sentiment on the center. And it fits beautifully. That's so clever. It is clever, isn't it? Yeah, the way really it works, it's very interactive, but the, the movement of it is really satisfying the way that that middle part spins it's, around. It's very satisfying, and it goes together so well. So yeah. you've got all these separate parts for the detail. We can see some of our lovely embossing folders coming in there. If you're looking at the stamps, actually, that's another set which is coming up at some point further on, as are these lovely stamps underneath. Yeah. But just a really caliber, and I'm seeing so much more now with, with coffee and coffee cups. Everybody's loving their coffee, so yeah. you've got a coffee-loving friend, you've got the die set. And it's good that you mentioned that we're going to see these because it shows that you can use this with the other dies because, I mean, in itself... This this is the enticing thing about it for me. But then we've got all of this space as a sort of blank canvas to okay. decorate yes. this coffee cup as okay. as you please. Uh, so that one is Card Cafe uh, by Jen Long. Okay, and finally for the uh, just this section here, I, I wanted to show. So this one here is Classic Box. Now we're getting into those kind of. We we we've just seen an interactive make. This is another one which is a bit more interactive. This is obviously a box die and what a lovely box set it is look at these lovely uh, rounded square this lovely rounded square label there that comes i think you'll find that's a rectangle round, uh, rounded <laughs> rounded rect thank you very much Sorry. you wouldn't know i used, to, used be to be a, a teacher, teacher. <laughs> used to be a teacher that's why i enjoy picking about so i appreciate the feedback uh, you mark this later and see okay. me <laughs> and then we get another tag there we've got these lovely little um, what are they, co they call the little protector things? Oh, strengthens the, yeah, the, the, like little strength. Yeah, like an eye hole yeah, thing, sort it. of thing. It just stops the string cutting through. I love them because you can have these from metallics as well to make it look like a metal piece on That's there. Right. But these are a great size to, you know, any time of year that you're making something, maybe if you're hand making a gift, why not put it in a handmade box, which is the perfect size to wrap as well. It's it's a lovely size to it's receive something, size. maybe a few little chocolates or... Um, could be parties, I think. I think now, you know, when people are getting together again, we've got baby showers, we've got children's parties. It could be wedding favours. Exactly, it yeah. Be, it could be on your Christmas table with some little chockies. Or, do you have to sugared almonds anymore? James, sugared almonds, do you know? No, a different generation, you see. I remember sugared almonds. <laughs> yeah. yeah, the wedding the wedding night, this is perfect. This could be a little box. Maybe like classy white or maybe off-white yep. box with confetti inside or something like that. People. Do people still use confetti? Is that... Yeah, we still okay? Good. Yeah. It's all biodegradable <laughs> now, Oh, yeah, 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 good. Even better. Brilliant. Okay, so um, on to the next section. 
Okay, we're going to talk about 3D technology. Speaking of technology, you might have noticed that my microphone is held on by a paperclip <laughs> because we lost the little plate. But this is proper technology. This is 3D. So 3D textured impressions. This one is by Keith Green. It's a lovely, gorgeous, and this, this type of thing, it could work as just a strip, it could work as a complete background. It's absolutely gorgeous. And if we look at the depth, and this is why I know it's by Kath, because it's so well put together. It's so clean, those lovely lines. Now imagine that as just a strip down the side oh. of your card. Imagine embossing your card front. Um, it really flows that, doesn't it? It almost looks like grass blowing in the wind from above. I was above. Just saying, if that was in green and you had some florals over the top. Yeah. Oh, can you imagine it in metallics? Or I know you love your luster waxes. Imagine yeah. you're busting it in black and going over the top. Oh. With, if I had to describe this in, Fancy. if I had to describe this in one word, hmm. that word would be mesmerizing mesmerizing he's been at the dictionary again yeah. there you go <laughs> it was so a thesaurus actually by Kathleen, and it's called flowing waves fantastic okay so sticking along that 3d uh, theme here we've got another one by kath breen uh, this is called ornamental spiral here and just have a look look at how crisp this is it's a it's a, a pattern repeat some of these swirls are going one way, some of them are going the other. It remind this this reminds me of water. I feel as though it's a kind of it's do you know those old uh I don't want to get this wrong, but you know those kind of um old sort of Japanese oh, folk yeah, pictures yeah, yeah. where the water is is designed in this way with all those spirals. If you added some mixed media techniques to just lighten these mm. swirls here against that blue, um, you know, may, maybe it's just the fact that this is on blue cardstock is making me think of the water, no, but no, I absolutely water. love it, yeah. Water. It's kind of like wind, water, droplets. There's a kind of natural theme, isn't there, to these embossing folders. Oh, yeah, this one is so crisp and defined, I absolutely absolutely love it so that one there is ornamental spiral again by the very talented kath breen okay now i'm looking at palm repeat this is by lisa jones and it is as the name suggests very stylized palm leaves um and this this one is what we call a multi-level so this isn't 3d well it is 3d but it's a multi-level 3d so it's got these lovely crisp edges so it's kind of like a 2d folder stacked on top of another 2d folder. yeah it's like it's like yeah. stepped up isn't it rather That's than right. have it 3d it's in two steps but th this one almost it, it's kind of like it's kind of like a North African sort of pattern repeat this one. I, li I like this one. I, I can see me cutting a, squ cutting a square and doing almost like a Moroccan tile uh, yeah. thing with it. Um, again, very different from the other two. Um, I, lo I love the fact that, that it's, uh, it's in lines like this, which it's kind of like a diamond pattern. Um, Really, really cool. Thank you, Lisa, for that one. We will be having a lot of fun with that one. Yeah, brilliant. And then sticking along again, the same theme here. This one is another kind of natural themed uh, multi-level. It's almost, it's very, it's similar to this one in a way, but it's not a pattern repeat here. So this is a, an actual kind of composition of amazing leaves and branches crossing each other, uh, you know, going in different directions. We've got that sort of scalloped edge on the leaf they're very stylized, very sort of stylish and contemporary. Uh, this one, as I say, is by Jen Ogborn. It's absolutely brilliant. Um, and I don't, I don't know the answer to this. I'm asking this question to you because okay. you will know. And these are sort of embossing folders where you can do things like bray at the back you, of it. You can very much so. And that's one of the great things about these folders because when we see this negative space underneath the pattern, mm -hmm. that would be an opportunity for you to brayer onto your embossing folder. So it's almost like inking it up yeah. like, like a printing plate and then you can create your emboss and you get a two-tone effect. That would work particularly well with that one, I would say. Absolutely right. There we are. So uh, another technique with this one. Absolutely brilliant. And then we have one 
final embossing folder. And this is one of our minis. Now this again is by Lisa and it's a text impression mini and it's called Mini Mosaic. Now we did have a mosaic folder a while ago. This is that pattern shrunk down because we know from the past that a lot of people have been asking about the minis. They were ever, ever so popular at the time. Some folks, they don't want, they don't want the entire car in front. They do want this smaller format embossing folder. And you can see why it's another multi-level. You can see those levels. And if I move this in the light, you can see the light uh, picking that up now. This is just card. This is just cardstock by itself. Imagine if you start applying mixed media product, if you start applying Lust to X, if you start applying inks, that is going to pop out something stunning. And this one, funnily enough, remember, remember Lisa's, um, those... Those the pattern repeat the uh, the one that we looked at. Oh earlier. yes, this matches that. It's the same pattern on the inside. So this is part wow. of a set. So that goes with that one perfectly. And that is mini mosaic by Lisa Jones. It's fantastic. These ones, I feel like it, they 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 shrink them down. Yep. But the pattern there intensifies then it, to me so. and, and you get this really kind of really tiny detailed impressive little embossing folder and this one is stunning it is indeed that is glorious thank you lisa and that concludes our embossing folders so first and foremost we're going to be looking at some wonderful stamps the first of which is a lovely set by lisa jones now this one is called geo repeat and well, some of these work over the top of each other, so it's kind of like a layering stamp set. Now, some of you might notice that some of these elements we have seen before. So let's bring in, and this is what's so smart about Lisa, the way she's put these together. So you can see that element there works with this. Fantastic. And then these, look at this one. Remember this set, this one's called Geo Oh, Frames. wow. And borders. Isn't it, it cool? it, so that fits with that fits. so far two different die sets. Yep. Are there any more? There are indeed. Well, not die sets as such, but if you need, if you notice some of these patterns repeating here, they w these stamps will work with these dies. And then finally, 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 remember three folded. Ah. Uh, so this was the one we saw in the coffee cup earlier as well. So this is a layering stamp as well so you layer that over there really really clever it's, oh, it's a wow. lovely set take away those it's a gorgeous set in his own right but add these in and it shows you um how clever lisa has been in putting this entire collection together these these lovely geos so all of them work independently but together Wow, stunning. The thought that's stunning. gone into that. Do you know what? Straight away, I want to try. Yep. I don't know if it'll work, but I like to experiment. I want to use these with the embossing folder, but with embossing ink and, impa and powder to see whether you get like an it. extra bit of emboss on top of your emboss. Emboss on emboss. Why not? Why not indeed? Let's push the envelope. <laughs> Okay, so uh, I wanted to show this one here. I chose this on purpose because I absolutely love it. Now this one here, it is called Spring Essentials. Now we have these lovely little character dies. The thing I love about a stamp set like this is it looks hand-drawn. So if you, for instance, you know, you, you may not have the skill to draw these lovely characters with that movement in there. And you know, the way that, that little chick there just looks so playful. It's difficult, it takes years and years and years of practice to be able to illustrate like this, but we've got you covered there because you can just stamp this with black ink or whatever you're stamping with at the time. And then you could paint it as well. And get your watercolors out. You can, you can get, oh, there's all sorts of things. There's chalks, there's, Whatever yeah. you want. I mean that you know. With and of course you can use you can use a waterproof ink and go over it with watercolors, or you can watercolor then go over the top of it. 
Oh, oh it's wow. perfect. And it's then one of those sets. these little decorative sort of wreaths here, the hand drawn wreaths, these are incredibly popular at the minute. If you go on a website like, you know, sort of Pinterest or something like that, you'll see these time and time again. And they are so popular. And you can see why, because they're lovely, illustrative, and just really nice and stylish. So you could use this along with any of the sort of, you know, character dies. You don't have to just use them with these stamps here. We've also got a sentiment there. Um, uh, and any set that has a sentiment is absolutely brilliant. Um, and we've got all these little elements that you can just build up. So this one here is by Olivia Rose and it is called Spring Essentials. So if you're watching this now and it's a bit chilly outside as it is here, we're trying to bring a little bit of spring sunshine into your life. Mm -hmm. That's what I like about chapter one. Yeah. Let's put the winter away. We're done with that. <laughs> Come on, spring. Let's see those little shoots popping up. Uh, I'm going to be looking at the layering stamp set. Now, Josh said he loved that one. I love it too. But this one, this one, what I love about this, and again, we talk about illustrative. This one is called Summer Bird. And the thing about this is that it's a layering stamp. So you get to do whatever you want with these. Now imagine that one, it doesn't have to be a block color. You can actually use distress inks or distress oxides. You can spritz it, you can get some gorgeous colors going Oh, lovely watercolory style effect. And the same with the florals, because these, these florals, of course, they coordinate with the florals on the branch. So yes. you've got the lovely thinking of you, you've got the birthday wishes as well. You can use them with or without. This could create a piece of artwork. Oh, and that sentiment there as well. I love sentiments, and I always mention this. I love it when you mix the styles of fonts. So you have one calligraphic font and one sort of bold, maybe capital sort of stylized font like that. Any sentiment that uses two different is a winner in my book. Uh, but I, I just love the composition of this. I love that. Even without these details, that that would be quite quite stunning. Really cool. Thank you very much, Olivia Rose. That is. Gorgeous, really is. Yeah. So, what would any collection be without a big bunch of lovely sentiments to tie those makes all together? Now, this one here is called Spring Bloom Sentiments uh, by Jess Slack. Oh, do you know what? We've got a few more dies by we Jess Slack coming up. So this is exciting. Jess. This is the first one you'll see by our very own creative designer uh, who you've seen on your screens, Jess Slack. Uh, and these are her sentiments here. So uh, as I say, they're called Spring Bloom Sentiments. And just have a look at these. Now, the, the design team, our design team, uh, who design all these dies, they're absolutely fantastic at their job. They're makers as well, and you can see it here, and you can see how Jess's experience in making as well has led to these lovely sentiments here. Because when you're making every single day, you think, don't you, you go, you, you go, oh, Oh, I wish we had this and then we get it. But have a look at here. So this says, you are my sunshine. I love this style of writing here. Uh, let your dreams blossom. And then of course, you have those floral dyes that we saw earlier that you could have with these. Um, we've got some floral stamps there that could tie in with some of the other florals in there. Uh, we've got, as I say, those kind of mixed font sentiments. In a, feel, in a field of daisies, be a wildflower. I love that sentiment. They're, they're not your kind of uh, ordinary sentiments, are they? No, they're not. And, and do you know what? Sometimes, sometimes we talk about. You, you have a look at what's out there, and sometimes uh, it's a bit same old, same old. So that's why it's nice to have something that's unique, something that's fresh, something with a lot of variety, just like a, a wildflower garden. Yeah. Or, you know, it's 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 a gorgeous set. It really is. Well done, Jess. That's well really cool. done, Jess. Absolutely yeah. love that. More to come from Jess. Uh, there we are. Uh, one more. This is Lisa Jones. It's quite a boho style. It's a very stylized one. This and um, it's really cool. It's it's a butterfly, of course, but it's a butterfly very much in three sections. So you'd stamp this one first. This one second, and this one third. And you could use, say, three colors of pink, three colors of yellows as well. And this is the kind of thing, let me hold that up to the camera. This is the kind of thing 
that you're going to get. So we've got two shades of pink and finally the black over the top for the detail. And of course you can use these layering stamps, all the layering stamps and in fact all the stamps with our wonderful stencil and stamp tool. If you haven't seen that go check it out. Um, really cool set. Thank you Lisa. We do love our butterflies here at Civics. So, on to our uh, stamp and framelit sets. Now, uh, so uh, just for anyone who's new to die cutting, we have stamp sets, we've got stamp and framelit sets where we have a framelit that's designed to come with that stamp. So you'll end up with a die cut piece that has the stamped image and it perfectly outlines uh, the image there. Now I've got two here by Jen Long. So let's start with this one, sort of following on from that theme of butterflies. This one, is beautiful and you know what i love the fact that this is not a symmetrical butterfly mm. because we've got this lovely ornate right in here happy birthday to you and you almost can't can't tell it's there until you really look at it it's, it's gorgeous uh, uh, jen long if you're watching we love this set. absolutely we love this it. set it's the, the writing's hidden in that lovely decorative detail you know those lovely swirls but it is it is all just part of that calligraphic writing we don't just have the one butterfly here we've got this one here and and different sizes of butterfly here are I, I love that. So we've got a, what would you call that? A flourish of butterflies? A flourish of butterflies. Is that what it is? The, I don't know. What's the Should collective be. term for butterflies? It, sh it must be flourish. flourish. It's yeah. got to be flourish. Uh, <laughs> so we've got that lovely flourish of butterflies there. But remember, you could, you could if you were careful, you could ink these in different colours and have a, a multicoloured uh, rainbow flourish of butterflies there. Again, this is a, a stamp set, so you can be really creative with it. It doesn't have to just be black stamping ink. You could use uh, maybe some embossing ink with embossing powder on there and get those lovely details. Uh, you could use distress inks, distress oxides, uh, and just have a really colorful butterfly. So that one there is called Butterfly Birthday. And then we also have another birthday theme card, which is called Cafe Set. Now this one is really cool. And I am a coffee drinker. I love my coffee. I love uh, just anything kind of related to a cafe or a coffee shop. It feels cozy to me, feels warm. Uh, and this one, that is cool. It really reminds me of that kind of retro sort of, uh, what's the word for it? I don't know, I can see that on a, a sort of a chalkboard. Exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah that's it. Yeah. Oh, that, do you know what? <laughs> it's just clicked. <laughs> there we are. So if you pick that up with some uh, white embossing powder ooh, on, on a black, you could have a little chalkboard because it's almost like a, like Pete says, like a kind of soup of the day menu sort of, of thing. This one goes with that set that we looked at earlier, that lovely coffee cup which opens up. Yes, it yes. does. We don't have the example we on us right it. now, but uh, of course, yeah, so this one's a really lovely set. And as I say, you have these lovely framelit um, shapes around here just to outline these so you can die cut them. These then become die cut pieces with that stamp detail on them. So that is absolutely lovely. And that is Cafe Set by Jen Long. So we go, we go from framelits and dice to thinlits and dice. And this one, well, I, I, you can't see much going on here. It's called, it's called, I, sh I should know what it's called. It's called Crazy Character Number One. I should know what it's called because I actually designed it. But it is thinlets and stamps. Um, let me show you, first of all, the thinlets. It, it's in a sort of a whimsical, funky style. We've got a typewriter, we've got a cotton reel, and we've got a lovely cup there. But this is what we're talking about, and this is how they go together. So you're just my type. So you can see what's happening here. We've got these little characters and we've got some- I love it. Stamps. You love it. Do you know what, can, you I ju are, uh, can I just interject for a you sec? Can, you can. Because this is your set, yeah. I understand that it's hard. You, Pete won't want to big these up loads and loads and loads because they're well. his set. So it's going to look like he's sort of blowing his own drum bit. But I am so excited by these sets. One, because they're just awesome. Two, because, and I'm not going to spoil any of these sentiments, because but they're hilarious and I love them. But also because it comes with the, they, they come with the eyes yeah. that can bring 
anything to life. Anything. Any dying cut piece. He's right. Whatever you can, you can stick these googly. It's like googly eyes. Just go around the office. Go around the office. Stick googly eyes. Oh, James. There's a little uh, fabric glow. It's, a, it's a little um, circular. What's it called? Right. Yeah, I want to show you because I've got an example of that there with these. Sorry, I'm interrupting yeah. you loads. I'm just no, very no, excited. No, no, no. Oh, have a look at that. But look at how I've brought this little globe, just a circle frame like that, to life. I brought that to life just with those eyes and the rosy cheeks from Pete's set there. I'll shut up now. I did not, you know, you've done that. No, it's, it's okay because you were saying nice things. So <laughs> you, you can interject at any point. But we love you so much. Love you a latte. You're just my type. So that's what we're going for. This is going to be an ongoing series. We have got another set, though, which I want to share with you. I'll leave those there for a second, because the next one is called Crazy Creatures Number 1. And again, we've got three different three different die sets, and we've also got our lovely sentiment stamps. Now, these are the dies themselves. We've got this chick, we've got the sheep, and we've got the hedgehog, and we have got some absolutely horrible stinkers of puns, which I hope you'll love. <laughs> so we'll love you so much. You. <laughs> it's clever, isn't it? <laughs> Sending hedgehogs, and finally, cool chick. So, yeah. I mean, they're really simple. You know what, these, I mean, they are, it's what you see on the tin. There's not a lot of creative mileage with them. They're just fun, they're whimsical, they're cute, great for small cards, big cards, you can put them together, you can do them separately. But you know what, uh, making these cards is one thing, and having fun, you know, just, just making it, but receiving them is another thing, because when you receive something like that, it's got that nice little joke on it, and you know, it, uh, maybe if you're a coffee lo lover, and someone sends you that lovely a latte and it's got a little a little yeah. uh, cup of coffee that's alive and smiling at you I think receiving something like that would just be an absolute do think, joy do you think these bad puns is kind of like dad jokes is it, is it yeah dad jokes that must be why, why we like them I think so <laughs> I don't know I hope so anyway on to our next section and now uh, this is something I'm incredibly excited about because I love these layered stencils. These are so impressive. I'm going to take one at a time. In fact, you know what? Let's go through them. This one here is Wildflower Border. Now, someone who's new to our product maybe might look at this and think, well, that's a painting or you know that's something that someone's worked an incredibly long time on to create it's got these lovely kind of uh, layered elements there these florals here that are blended within each petal uh, the composition of it is so well thought out it's just an incredible piece of art um, but these are our layered stemples stemples these are stencils. our stencils the reason I said stemples then is because it's part of our uh, technology that we use with the stencil and stamp press. So you can see how I've got those two words mixed up to create the word stemples. Stemples. Yeah. Stemples. <laughs> but I, I just love stemples. these. I absolutely love them. It's absolutely right. And I think this was something that you hit on when we first started looking at the layered stencils. The fact that you can create something like that so easily. And even if you don't choose the, the colors that we would choose. Yeah. It's still stunning the way that they fade out, the way that they blend, the way that they're strong in places, weaker in others to create that kind of almost like ethereal and it's blended around the edges as well. Really, really It cool. looks watercolor and, and you're right, you could, you could have a play with the colors here. You know, for instance, stems don't always have to be green. You could do maybe a deep purple stem or, well, you know, any color that you choose, you could have a go with this because you can recreate the same image as many times as you want and the process is very fun and relaxing. Absolutely. Yeah. Couldn't agree more. So that one there is Wildflower Border. Now I'm going to show, and this, this is a hand, we, we say there's a lot, it's one of my favourites, but we do have a lot of favourites. But I think um, from this release, the painted peonies has got to be mine because it is stunning, and as Josh said, these look like works of art. They really do. And you know what? Something, something we haven't mentioned yet is it doesn't have to be six by six. You can create this 
you can cut it into three panels. You could take a smaller section. You know, it, do it doesn't have to be this size. You could create the full thing mm -hmm. and then trim it down to fit your card or whatever project that you're making. You don't have to use all four layers. You can just use three layers, but get creative with the colors. It doesn't have to be the reds and the pinks. It could be, as you say, it could be lilacs and purples. It mm -hmm. could be just grays. All the way through to black. Oh, monochrome. Monochromatic. Yeah. You can spritz water onto these to get a real watercolor effect. Uh, painted peonies, though, I, I must say, this, this is absolutely stunning. And the way that it's almost faded to a blur in certain areas, it's kind of almost like you know you're focusing in this is in the foreground and that is just dropping into uh, the it's, background so it's clever the way it's done the fact that these parts have been left blank because they know you're going to use uh, most likely to start with anyway a lighter color underneath that's going oh, to yeah. shine through now this looks like light you know intense light hitting the top of that rose it does it's absolutely gorgeous really cool what's next so uh, finally in our range of layered stencils we have the geo background here and as Pete was mentioning earlier how you can kind of pick and choose the different layers that you want here we can see that this is a pattern repeat this is the full pattern here but you could take elements out if you wanted a more minimalistic pattern um, you know you don't have to have these solid colors all the way across you could have a gradient of different colors all creating this fantastic pattern well, I, I look at this and I think of cut it in four you've got tiles yes you know, cut it in 12 16 it doesn't really matter it's yeah awesome. like mosaic tile and yeah. and it really reminds me this of when you look in a kaleidoscope yeah 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 oh, that's such a cool pattern uh, incredibly clever really fun to use uh, i can't say enough about these layered stencils one little thing though uh, the stencil and stamp tool if you haven't seen it if you don't know about it check out our website there's all sorts of information there's all sorts of inspiration it will tell you how to use this tool you can use layered stencils there's nothing new layered stencils what is new is our registration system so check out that stencil and stamp tool you won't be disappointed so now it brings us on to a special collection a collection that is close to our hearts because it's a designer that is close to our hearts it's our very own Jess Slack she can't be here today unfortunately. she can't be here. well I mean not unfortunate because she not is probably living it up she on is. a cruise she's on holiday can you believe that we're sending here shivering. <laughs> anyway, we do love you. We're sending the love. And uh, what better way to send the love than with a beautiful, this, this garden rose. A rose by any other name should smell so sweet. Did actually, you write that? Uh, yeah, I wrote that. <laughs> yeah. I wrote that. No, that, that, that is uh, Romeo and Juliet. Romeo and Juliet. Romeo but look, and Juliet. At, look at it. This, this is gorgeous. And do you know the clever thing about it is? is that it doesn't have to fee be a full bloom like this. Now, this is using our gorgeous crepe paper. Again, check out the Sizzix range of crepe paper. Um, but the way that she shaped these leaves, the way that the way that she's got this full blossom, and you know, if you pull some of these back, you, you, could, you could spread it, it could be a tighter blossom. You could even do like, like the head of, um, what do you call it, like a, the rose hip type thing. Oh yeah. You could get that going on, but the reason that it does work so well, and this, this is the product, this is Garden Rose. And you can see that we've got all these times, we've got petals of different shapes. We've got this one for the center, this would be your stamen. The way, but the way, what I love is the way that Jess manipulates it to create those. And even though we marvel at it sometimes, she does tell us that it's very easy. Uh, and I know I've seen her on TV doing it and she makes it look easy. She makes That's it look great. incredibly easy. But no one does florals like Jess. We're, no. We are, we're getting there, okay. we like to think. But Jess is our go-to person She's for florals. But we see this on its own and it's absolutely stunning. But imagine this in a whole bouquet of of these kind of natural realistic looking florals and that's what you're getting with these designs yes yeah, so this is one of several designs of this type so you can create your own paper bouquet or you know it could be cardstock it doesn't have to be crepe paper as well it could be um you know sculpting foam as well so yeah. i believe you have another flower i do have another flower but do you know what i'm really happy that we get to show it so this is daisy flower mix here so uh 
on the packaging image, obviously we've got it made with the crepe paper there. Um, I'll just move that around in case the shine is uh, hitting the camera. But we can see here, these are the realistic kind of floors that would tie in with the rows over there. Um, but we don't always have to use crepe paper when we're making them because have a look at the embellished image here. Here we've used just some of our cardstock and the paper sculpting kit and she's really brought them to life. It's for that more kind of uh, poppy feel, you know, that kind of poppy, almost kind of, I want to say sizzix poppy feel, but it's the lovely, yeah. this is our Colour Story cardstock. And we're still getting that 3D nature where the light is just playing across them on here. So they would make lovely features on the front of a card. Um, but so you have both options with this. Absolutely. Absolutely. And you can build these up as much as you like. And what we see here, we've got this lovely stamen die as well so that creates that lovely stamen you just roll it around oh incredibly itself. easy to use aren't they yeah. looking at yeah. them you might not think so but now, they're so clever there is something so pleasing about that and of course we do have a flower making kit so check out our flower making kits which work perfectly with those two dies brilliant and that was daisy flower mix right, i'm going to move on because obviously with, with florals with with sometimes sometimes when you've got a composition or always when you go to composition, you're going to need something like this. This is shape frames and this helps bring a composition together. And you can see these are a really good size. So if you want to get floors on this, it's perfect. It's not, it's not going to be swamped by those big shapes, but these can overlap. You can cut two of the same shape and offset them slightly, uh, particularly this, what's, what's, what do we call it? Is it rhombus or a, what's a the rhombus or there's a, is it a parallelogram? Parallelogram. Yeah. Parallelogram. That's the one, two parallel sides. There you go. Um, parallel. So yeah, that, that's, that's a great one. You can offset them. You can have it at a quirky angle doesn't really matter but a great set an absolute must and this is one that will stay in your stash and you will use time and time again and let's take a look this is the actual size of those frames really really nice very usable it's one that we've been using already getting ahead of ourselves and just I believe <laughs> you are going to show something using this as well I do just before I show that I, with these here oh, yeah. I know that so looking at these I think people would look and go well they're basic shapes aren't they you know why why don't I cut it myself or something like that but I think people underestimate how difficult it is to cut these perfect shapes like this and as you say sort of how often you're gonna use them time yeah. and time again so and don't forget there's also the bits on the inside as well yes so you've got those shapes from the inside you can use them to cut an aperture in your card front as well so there is that so you're getting a frame you're getting the inside and you're getting the ability to cut an aperture in a card yeah Very absolutely important. love that set i really love it but you're right i do have another one this one here is a uh, floral cluster and again these are all by our very own Jess Slack we're very excited about these sets here because um, as I say you know working day to day you, yeah. you find those dies that you wish were in existence and then you make it so, make it so <laughs> uh, but this is a really really lovely set here because uh, you have again the different styles and size of florals I love any set that's got different different elements of foliage so you can build those up sometimes a floral or just a foliage element is the perfect uh, finishing touch on a card yeah and, and just by itself you know because you've got the options there's not all one die there's loads of separates you can build it up into any composition you like the way that you change up the colors you've got all this foliage you can create a wreath you can, there's so much you could keep on going with this set and never ever repeat it. and look at the size of them as well they're just so usable Great size. yeah it's hard to tell from the packaging when i pulled this one across i was reminded of kind of the perfect size of these because especially with this layering one here mm. that's two flowers you know in itself and, and then you can build them up as well so there's loads yep. of possibilities with them Absolutely. but um when we talk about that set the previous set over there this set with this set work incredibly well together and we have an example of this here now 
these are so stylish yeah. that kind of frame especially done in metallics like that i love it um you might see this or uh, for me on like maybe a, a wedding invite maybe a spring party a wedding invite down the middle there's some sort of party invite this could be monochrome it could be just in green yeah. and whites it's ah love it love it love it love it absolutely brilliant well um, jess you knocked it out the park <laughs> Well, Josh, we uh, well, I can't say we say we're the best of us because it's all great, but uh, we know that many of you uh, out there are big fans of Eileen Holt. So I'm going to show you the dies and then I'm going to show you a couple of examples because one of the things about an Eileen Holt collection is everything is designed yeah, to everything together, goes together so seamlessly within that collection, but not only that, the collection previously and the collection following as well. Really, really well thought out. Mm -hmm. Now, this is the frame pocket journal. And we know how popular Eileen's journaling dies have been. This is a Biggs Plus die. So if you have a switch or if you have a Biggs Plus machine, a Big Shot Plus, that's what you will need to cut this die. And you know what, what a great investment because this is about cutting mat board. It's about cutting mat board. It's about cutting heavier weight materials to make a really substantial, sub, sub, substantial, <laughs> strong journal. And you can see there, we have this example on the top. That's actually Eileen's uh, sample, which she very kindly sent over for us. Um, you get all the different tabs, all the different pockets. You get everything to construct this. It's uh, incredibly clever in the way it works, isn't it? Because scoreboard dies in their nature, they will cut a partial cut through so they cut through the the mount board but they'll cut it partially so you can then create a fold uh on mat board which isn't otherwise a sort of possibility so really clever just thank you for saying that because i didn't say that they had scoreboards of course they don't just cut the board they score it i can yeah <laughs> this is a scoreboard that is a special special technology as josh rightly said now we have some other dies before i show you the next uh the next sample, this one is tiled alpha numeric, which is a gorgeous tie by itself. Now, you can use this as it is. You can use the letters which come out. So it is an alphabet as well. Lovely we letters as well. Library pocket. Oh, yeah. Uh, it's a really nice classic sans serif font. Yeah. Library pocket, ATC card and tabs. Exactly as the name uh, suggests. So it's ATC card star sized for those of you who love your ATC cards. I believe they're coming back in a big way, but it's the pocket as well. So this is integral to the journal. You can put this inside the journal and we'll have a look at that in a second. Now, finally, tablecloth, one of my favorite 3D textured impressions it, it, it is absolutely stunning it's like a lace tablecloth the level of detail in there is is quite incredible and i think i've got an example in the next uh, in the next um Do you know what? not not enough is said about how fantastic eileen holds 3d embossing folders didn't i say enough ah oh, no <laughs> you you did but i just mean in general no, you're right, you're in general right, yeah. i mean I, I absolutely love them these are embossing folders that i come back to time and time again because this looks real say if you cut it, it from the right color it actually looks yeah. like it could be lace fabric uh, i just find it so clever if you go over this with antique linen um, distressing on cream card I would I would you know if you showed it to somebody they they would think absolutely that this was a piece of yeah. table but they really would it's, it's gorgeous awesome it's fantastic now here's something which is only more of a fresh kind of Sizzixy style but you can see I've used the letters from that lovely alphanumeric and we've got a big button oh, I love the way that you've just you you've used the aperture of some letters with the actual die cut letters on there I love that yeah that's just a tiny little Pete Hughes touch that yeah, is Pete Hughes touch oh my word now look at this this tab is separate this tab is part and parcel of the scoreboard remember these our lovely decorative corners we talked yeah. about those earlier we showed them earlier how they come in so useful now there's this tab here you can see it slides out 
we just had a look at this. So th this is this is made out of mat board. This is part of the journal. Then we've got that gorgeous, and that's part of the alphanumeric. And then let's open this up again. These lovely corners. There's my daughter. Is that Poppy? Poppy. That is Poppy. That is Poppy. <laughs> so, Poppy popping out. Poppy popping out. Mm. Hell yeah. So oh oh, do you know what? It's all it's all falling apart, Josh. That's me. That's my bad. That's my bad. I used the wrong tape. You used but the wrong this, this, you know, Today, we, these are the days. So you could put, and this is using Jess's lovely, lovely um, backgrounds there. Aww. We've got the alphabet coming in. There we are. We've got Poppy again. We've got some of those. Look at that. Scrolls. That yeah. is, so anybody who is into journaling, yeah. obviously this is going to be an absolutely lovely uh, die for, but just in general, what a lovely way to keep a memory. Oh, you yeah. know, this is fun to look through. Uh, it, it, it's all interactive. You know, you can look through it like a book, but just the fact that it all comes to life with that lovely kind of illustrative, yeah. uh, the look with all the dyes, all these lovely fonts, the different, the materials, the metallics, it enhances even the kind of memory of that uh, lovely event. Very much so. I mean, this is almost done like a blank, so we haven't added much to this, but you see that lovely alphabet coming in as well. Yeah. The little tabs, the ATC cards that we looked at. The the. ATC card pocket so it's integral to the design of this journal we've got some of our lovely there we are those gorgeous but check this out look at that look at that lovely that crochet that yeah look, and it's it tactile is. as well there look how well I mean you know you've done this so well uh, and th this is, I mean, the die is absolutely fantastic. But you have put Jen Long's butterfly on top of here. I wouldn't have thought of doing that, but look how well it works. You would have thought of it eventually. You would have thought of it. <laughs> But there we are, we got we got all the birthdays. We got all the birthdays. Auntie Carol, 8th of January, can't forget that one. Okay. Is that your handwriting? Hmm? Is that your handwriting? Uh, or is it printed? Y yes, it is. <laughs> oh no, it's not. Uh, I, was, I was about to congratulate it's you on that. Uh, on a computer, my handwriting is like a spider's <laughs> crawled across the page. Oh, you um, did mention earlier, actually, that you should have been a GP. Yeah, I forgot I about that. I was about to say, yeah. I should have, absolutely. <laughs> but there we are, goals. There we are. This, this is in, in the back here. We've, we've We've got all these lovely so passwords. Oh my goodness! How often <laughs> do we forget a password? Yeah, or we'll have yeah, ten so variations little... of your main passwords. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's a really great idea. So you've got all these little pockets, all these little reminders, all put together by Eileen. You know the popularity of journals is phenomenal at the moment, and this this base die, this is so rigid. This is so substantial. So to keep all those little notes together. Well, how much would it cost if you were to buy something like this from a shop? And I've seen them, at, you know, uh, in stationery shops, like really lovely stationery shops. I'm not going to mention the names, but you see things like this and the, yeah. the potential to be able to buy one die uh, or, or this collection and be able to create your own time and time again. That's yeah. going to yeah. save you so much money. And it's personalized as well. So, you know, you don't well, have to, you're not yeah. limited to their selection. You can imagine these going along. This is 2023. Yeah, all, all seasonal as well. So Absolutely. in the spring, we have the spring yeah. colors. In the in the autumn, we have those lovely autumn it colors. It could be a wedding. It could be individual or, or they just could be they could be standard journals but they could be memory albums and you're absolutely right Josh what you're getting when you when you when you do it with the die you're creating it from scratch every single piece it's not just shop board. I mean, shop board, there's some nice ones out there, but when, you, when you're doing it like this, you are doing it from scratch, everything yourself. And that's why we're makers, because we invest a lot of love, a lot of time, a lot of care into something like this. That's what Eileen's all about, and I'm sure you'll agree, this is another stunning collection. So I've got my hands full here. It's time to talk about Mr. Tim Holtz. But this is we're, we're going to go through this very quickly and brief. This is just a teaser. Of course, we will be doing our own content. Yep. We will be doing a video where we will look more in depth. But if you really want to go in depth, if you really want to find out the inspiration behind these dies, these folders, then check out Tim's website. He will be doing his own overview and you will be getting to see some of the wonderful inspiration from his makers. So we're going to go through this 
pretty quick. This is just a teaser. So first of all, we're looking, we're talking about 3D embossing. Well, actually, this is a multi-level and it's called Dotted. Now, really contemporary, this one. I love that a lot, but I haven't used it yet. I haven't got to use it yet. It's so frustrating. And we love these, but we don't get to use them. This one is entangled again. That depth, that detail, that wonderful oh. naturalistic, that is signature Tim. You know, I was mentioning those techniques earlier about the, uh, with the luster wax and the, and the dark card and stuff. I am itching to use that one. Yeah, that, that one again. Oh, this one I have actually used. This one, um, because this, this is almost, it's a dye. It's similar to a dye that Tim did a while back. This one's called Mosaic. We get that lovely stone effect, but with dry brush, and techniques like that this one oh do you know my. what when I look at this yeah. I'm thinking of the Tim Holtz village collection and having a uh, like a courtyard you know in the middle of some of these houses oh it's clever stuff Josh clever stuff now wouldn't be a Tim Holtz collection without a stunning alphabet but now we've got two and this one is alphanumeric emporium it's a great size. We're going to be showing examples of these later on, but I love the way that the, that the highlights are actually cut yeah. out of the die. It is a stunner, and it works perfectly with alphanumeric bulletin. Now this one, this one is a really good size. Again, I'll show you some examples in a second, but this one, you can use the letters, you can use the outside of the letters, or you can use them together. It's one of those, and it's something that Tim does so well, is you're getting one alphabet, but three completely different uses. Now, Blossom, this is, it's not a colorized, it is multi-layered. It is almost taken from a photographic source, and you get those gorgeous layers, and kudos to Tim for the colors he's chosen with this one. It's quite, quite stunning. Now, if you remember the, some of the abstract, uh, scribbles and splats um, we did uh, Tim did a while ago he also did the remember the media marks we love uh, you know what this one I am incredibly excited by because this is a chance to play I want to oh. play and and I can think of a thousand things already that I'm going to create with this the, the, do you know what I, I haven't made anything with this yet because I'm saving the best to I love these we love these yeah. Tim loves these <laughs> um, it is just that that is just open season for a designer the, the stuff you can do with this and it's one of those that you're going to be pulling from your stash time and time again just to use some of these individual elements this is oh I love it I can't say <laughs> enough about it um, celebrate colorized these are colorized dyes these are colorized dyes but oh my word the way that they layer up the, and stylistically they go so well together so any celebrations all through year could be birthdays could be well mainly birthdays actually but any <laughs> time of could be birthdays could be christmas it could be, could it be could any be kind of party there you go that's it uh, celebrate colorized ah match made in heaven now tailored to this yeah. one there, were, there, was, there was a stamp and framelit set. There's also been stamp sets. This is classic Tim. This is classic Tim in a vintage style. But these are layered framelit, uh, thinlit dies, I should say. <laughs> and now, we, we've talked about this one. True love, colorized. This is the gift that keeps on giving. I know I say that, but the stuff you could just, if you want to make the box, that's fine. If you want to use the individual chocolates, that's fine. You've got a gorgeous heart there. That's fine. It's a stunner. We'll see a sample of this in a second. I'm sure you'll... It's making me hungry, that one. Everybody says that. Everybody yeah. saw the card. They said, oh, I could eat that. I, I could. could eat that. I could. Yeah. I love it. And when people come through the office and they see and something catches their eye, because they're seeing this stuff day in, day out, when something like this catches their eye, you know you're onto a winner. Now, next up, wood slice. There are... Now this wood slice, they come in three separate sections and you can ink up the center one to create this detail. So they're those dies that you can that you can ink up as well. But it comes with a third alphabet. So you're getting those great wood slices, but you're also getting this wonderful alphabet. Really cool. That is incredible that you get the alphabet with that as well. It's not just that they work together. There's two different die sets. You're getting it with it. And I love this alphabet. I love the alphabet. How how cool is that? I would buy that alphabet by itself, I really would. Now, we talked about classic Tim. This one is Gentleman. And as you can see, they have separate uh, accessories, the walking stick and the umbrella. 
classic shapes, you know, even if you're just cutting them as a silhouette like that. For mixed media art, they give you so many opportunities to create the look and feel that you want. That is really classic, Tim. It goes so perfectly with the stamps. You can ink it up all the live long day. Now, the bunny stitch, this is, this is gorgeous because the stitches are separate. <laughs> so you can create these wonderful stylized bunnies. You've also got the carrot, the heart, the egg. So if you're thinking about Easter or you're just thinking about fun and frivolity. It's Ooh, do you know what set. also with this, with the stitches being separate, uh -huh. you could use those to add a stitch effect to any character it's die that anything, you've got. Anything. Uh, so that's, that's really cool, especially when coming towards maybe Halloween and you want oh, sort of like, yeah, like a Frankenstein yeah, 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 sort of effect. Oh, yeah. and, and cool. great. And you can add them to absolutely, if, even if you just want to board it. It's perfect. So let's pop these to one side. Now this one, this is a particular favorite of mine. We talked about coffee earlier. This mm. is paper cut coffee. Not quite colorized, but it's in that region. This is so much fun. This is so usable. I like them for kind of mini cards, but we'll have a look at some, some examples of that. So I'm not gonna to talk too much about that one at the moment. Um, this is another colorized. Love this one. This is Road Trip. This is a favorite of yours. I isn't absolutely it? love it. I love the star, style of the car. We've got the sign. We've got all the separate luggage. We've got the tree. Now, the tree can go on the top of the car. So if this is driving home for Christmas, you know, you can strap the tea on the top. There is a separate strapping for oh, the tree. Or it's kind of the, that is kind of those, uh, you know, the 1950s sort of info cartoons that they used to do. That, that, so. That's the uh, style of it this. It sure is. It sure is. It's a, it's, a, it's a gorgeous set. And we've had a lot of fun playing with it now. Brushstroke, this is the last, I believe, of Tim's Brushstroke series. And this one really brings the scale down. Now, previously, we've seen Brushstroke in all different shapes and sizes, but we've never gone down to this size. This is, this is Brushstroke Mini. And you can see these are much, much smaller dies. So you get a sense of scale when you're working with the larger ones, you can put the smaller ones alongside. It really does complete the series. Absolutely glorious set, but, that being said, let's take a look at some inspiration. So we will start with those brushstroke minis. These are a couple of cards which uh, we created for our photo shoot here. How, how, but look at how the difference. Look at the difference between. So you're getting these two different styles here. We've used just the you know the bold colours overlaying. Yeah. Here we've got the inking effects, and they're all. It's like they're two different uh, products it's, almost, just by choosing a different technique and I've always wanted to see a, a smaller brush stroke as yeah, well because I, I love yeah. the big ones I love the big ones they are a big you know uh, a feature on the car themselves but the these small ones and and don't forget that you can use them alongside the ones that you already own yeah. as well it's whatever you want it to be and that's the beauty of it. and that's the versatility and versatility folks means value for money it's something that you will be dipping into your stash time and time again. Let's talk about, let's talk about, now this one. Remember? When we were just looking at that, we were talking about that lovely alphabet. The, the detail, now what, what I've done actually here, the center is slightly different. I've actually used an embossing folder from Tim's last collection. Do you remember that wood grain one? Yes, so I remember that. The Tim's chapter three. So we brought that in, we've used it alongside, uh, and that shows how Tim thinks it through. You can mix and match things of what's gone before and what's coming. But, but also, there's because that wood grain effect is the tree rings, isn't it, in That's that folder. So, yeah. Tim also has some wood grain effects of, of the like bark of a tree, so I'm imagining, you know yeah. when people write those, um, the little kind of like, upset Josh and Susie forever, forever on a tree. I want to do a card like that with this because that's what it looks like. The alphabet looks like it's carved into the side so of the tree. I'm sorry, if you're watching this, Susie, that was a spoiler for your Valentine's Day. <laughs> no surprise there. Okay, well, we've, and you can see, look at the background. It's that lovely mosaic, that, that gorgeous mosaic. Now, Josh's favorite, let's have a look. It's the car. There she is, it's road trip. So this one, we've used a bit of a map in the background. We strapped the luggage to the top. It could be the tree. It's never too early to start your Christmas cards, you know? It really isn't. So there you go, a lovely, lovely day. And you can see it is a colorized. So we've got that depth, we've got that detail, we've got that wonderful layering. And when we talk about depth and detail and layering, how about that? I, 
I am not taking any credit for this because it's in the die set. It's all there for you. It, but it's stunning. It is absolutely. Do you know what? Incredible. You always say you always say I'm not taking credit for it, and normally I'm like you should take credit for it but yeah. this die speaks for itself it does, doesn't yeah. it i mean this is it's that thing of when i said it makes me hungry this yeah. looks like it looks like an illustrated chocolate box but also you've added a bit of dimension there just using i imagine a tiny bit of foam tape like that we've got that bit of depth we and that, that brings it to life but look at those little uh, i love how incredibly sort of um realistic the icing yeah. thing it looks like someone's actually applied it with an icing uh tube Very really nice. cool thank you mr holtz love that clever one. We, we love that one now the gentleman and the alphabets let's put them together this is kind of what you get so we've got the bad boys and we've got the gentleman there. Different techniques. I haven't even added these to the projects that they're meant to go on yet. So it's very much a work in progress. But this is obviously Distress Inks. This is acrylics. You can see, oh, that, that lovely detail there. Sometimes it's a highlight, as here, where, where there's uh, a pale of color behind. And sometimes it's the shadow on the inside. But the sense of scale that you get with this gorgeous, gorgeous, larger one. And as you can see, we've put the outsides on these. You can take them away, you can just have them by themselves. Do you know what? I didn't Great know, with looking at that, I didn't know that the, the umbrellas and the canes that you get in are actually separate. Indeed they are. Separate elements. I thought that they were part of this whole silhouette when I looked at that. That's incredible, because I would use these elements on their own. Yep. And you know, imagine doing a little kind of um, umbrella stand somewhere in your car piece, and just using those on their own, that's cool. So we brought, we brought the, that alphabet in again. This is, this is a classic Tim Holtz tag size. Um, you can see we've used acrylics for this, but we've used those lovely, those lovely elements. Oh, wow. That set that we were talking about before we mm. find it. There we are. That's the one. This is abstract elements. And you can see how I've used these just to create back. So this one cuts an aperture. You can <laughs> keep the little dots as well and add those. You know, so most of them just cut the aperture or you can have, you can use the positive, you can use the negative, but a stunning, stunning piece of art by itself. And we've got that lovely alphabet running up the side. Now, we talked about the, when we were saying about the celebration, we were saying about the birthday, again, we've got the alphabet. We've got all those different elements from that colorized set. These have been colored using acrylics. You could just put just plain old cardstock and it would look equally as stunning. Just, add, oh, and look at that background, that dotted background, that's that, that's that dotted embossing fold. Oh, wow, well. the, so yeah. the, the dotted embossing, that ties in with this die cut piece here. Oh, very much. That's, this is the kind of thing that if someone made that for you, even if this was a card front, yeah. you wouldn't throw it away because it oh. looks too brilliant. I love that. Yeah, it's, it's a piece of art in itself. Uh, again, I'm not taking the credit. The credit has to go to the wonderful die sets. And we've, we've got a couple more to look at. But before we do, coffee. Now, I said I love those coffee cups. And check these out, just mini cards. <laughs> too much Monday, not enough coffee. How about this, to-do list. Drink coffee, save the world. <laughs> <laughs> I love, I absolutely love these I cards. That's a cute card. Yeah. You? you know, as long as you're choosing the right colors, and this is all Sizzik's color story card stuff. Everything here we see is the color story. Oh, look, it's coffee a plus. <laughs> How about caffeinated and motivated? Yes, indeed, there's a few people who could say that around here. And uh, finally, I'll take coffee with my sunshine. What a lovely way to start the day. But yeah. there we are, we've got the four different, the five different coffee cups there. So you can mix and match these. You can put them in a row. You can use them individually. That's um, the thing. You know, everybody loves a hot, and there's not, not everyone's a coffee lover. This might be tea. Could be tea. It could, it be, could be green tea. tea. It could be any hot drink, yeah. maybe a hot chocolate on a winter's evening. Yeah. Uh, it's brilliant. Send the love out to the hot chocolate and the tea. Good, good call. <laughs> you see, we tend to be, have tunnel vision sometimes. <laughs> and think, because it's called a coffee cafe, we think coffee, but Josh is quite right. It could be tea, it could be hot chocolate. It could be hot black currant juice. It could be, and just to mention, in the, in the packaging imagery, which I can't find at the minute, I noticed that they have, you might be doing a card about 
dishes, you know, dirty dishes yeah. or something like, you know, for maybe for your uh, partner who needs to do it. If you've been very passive aggressive, maybe. <laughs> but the way that they've uh, stacked these on top of each other and then working like that, I think that is incredibly really clever. Fun. Love that. So do you leave dirty dishes? No, never. No, no, me. I'm glad we got this straight. I hope our partners aren't watching. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, yes, indeed. Have a look at this. Look at this lovely. Uh, it's a lovely little album. It's it's actually a work in progress. I'm halfway through this. So we've got that beautiful bloom in the background that we looked earlier. We've got that lovely alphabet coming in. There we are. Look at there's, that. There's our mosaic peeping in under there. So, like I say, this this is this is only partially done. Uh, I'm going to get round to finishing this in the new year. But yeah. how much fun was that to make? I can see it's like yep. you've just got your all of your ideas and just gone bleh, onto that card, and it's absolutely lovely. It's uh, it's from a design perspective, it's almost like a stream of consciousness. Yeah, I'm not even thinking where I'm going. I know it's going to turn out all right because I've got the dice to do it. You see, now the last one. Remember our our bunnies, our lovely stitched bunnies. There we are. What a lovely centerpiece um, for we've got Easter written there. And you know, these, these are just cutesy bunnies. Um, uh, and you can see we've got the stitching on it. You can take the stitching off, but it's going to be great at Easter. It's going to be great for kids' cars, this, this kind of thing. Uh, really fun to make. And uh, I, I love making stuff like this. Yeah, oh, look, we especially don't the yeah. time, but when we do, when we do, it's a joy. Showstopper pieces, it's we call them, and that's something that uh, you know we can see time and time again with, especially with Tim's team, incredibly talented team. Oh, Tim has uh, all, all of Tim's team's makes are showstopper pieces, so uh, awesome. we're very lucky to get uh, get some of them sometimes. And if you want to see them, if you want to see those showstopper pieces, remember to go to timholtz.com check out his website it'll be on it youtube afterwards but but join in on the day and send a message you know um because he loves the interaction and he's going to go through these in great great depth we will be having a longer uh, session talking about these where we will show you some we've only brought out a few samples and examples there will be a lot more and that will be coming up of course at some point in january and that brings Mr. Holtz's section to a conclusion. So thank you very much for watching. I hope that you have found this uh, inspiring. I hope you're as excited as we are uh, to get your hands on all this fantastic product. Yep, yeah, and it should be in stores now. So um, really cool. I really enjoyed that. It's, it's lovely to see them all in one place like that and talk through them. And as Josh said, we hope you find some inspiration from it. There will be lots of uh, video content from all your favorite designers showing how to get the best out of these designs as well. So don't forget there will be a longer Tim Holtz video as well. Check out Tim's. Yeah, I think our job here is done, my friend. I think that is it from Pete and I. So uh, we will see you next time. <laughs>